Hey, Dia, you're back. <laughs> Are these two friends of yours? <laughs> Likewise. There's no need to be so formal with us. We're a pretty casual crew. Anyway, uh, since we've got a newcomer, let me fill you in on what the Khan al Akmar's been up to lately. They've become extremely aggressive. Apparently, even their own now have become acceptable targets. They even attack other relics brigades, just the same as any other mercenary brigade. Even the most ferocious beasts still protect their own. It sounds like they've thrown that straight to the wind. <sighs> That's right. Once they've collected enough loot off the other mercenaries, they sell it off to a different brigade, or, or turn to merchants on the black market. A portion of their profits is immediately exchanged for more food and weaponry to be used in their next violent operation. That's terrible! Yeah, and it really makes you wonder why they're so desperate for Mora. A few days ago, Isham and I trailed them for a while, and even disguised ourselves as merchants to conduct trade with them, we were able to learn a few things from the exchange. Rather than saying they're out to plunder and hoard Mora, it'd probably be more accurate to say that they're experiencing an internal power struggle. Wait, a power struggle? You heard me right. The vast majority of their victims are mercenaries from the other brigades of Deshret's relics. If their only goal was Mora, they could have gone after anybody. The targeted nature of their attacks points to a power struggle between the different brigades within the relics. That's the only plausible explanation we have. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find out anything more specific. It seems they're also trying to keep things under wraps. Oh, one last thing we discovered was that over the past few years, as the Khan al Ahmar became more and more active, Deshret's relics as a whole became a lot weaker. Hmm, sounds mighty strange to me too. Harun, you can leave the rest of the investigation to us. Gotta say though, I didn't expect you to go on a whole undercover mission during the few days I was gone. Sounds like you were really putting your necks on the line, no? Nah, it was nothing. We're just as concerned about the situation as you are. The Khan al Ahmar is your father's crew after all. <laughs> what he said. Besides, Dia, haven't you done more dangerous things than all of us combined? What we did is nothing compared to your experiences. Yeah. And while they went to talk with Dakan al Akmar, I took a look at the last camp they attacked. Any survivors of the attack were already long gone. There was nothing of value left in the camp. Ah, Hisham and Kalaf. You're here too. We rushed over as soon as we saw you come into Caravan Rebot. Although this new friend of yours looks a little green behind the ears, I'm sensing a special vibe from him. Now that we know you'll have a capable partner with you, we can also rest easy. Hey, what about Paimon? Feel anything special? Oh, uh, you're also planning to tag along with them? Of course! Paimon is the Traveler's most important guide. Wherever he goes, Paimon will follow. Oh, in that case, then you'd better take care of her too, Dia. <laughs> Don't worry about her. She may look tiny and helpless, but she's been through just as many battles as the Traveler here. Even if she had only survived on sheer luck, then that alone would still make her quite formidable. <laughs> I had no idea. I guess I shouldn't judge by appearances. <laughs> oh, one other thing, Dia. When you're free, why don't you update the deputy about your upcoming schedule? We held another recruitment event a few days ago, but everyone only came to see the Flame Main. You weren't around at the time, so people were pretty disappointed to only find our crew of rough, unkempt guys. The deputy put a lot of effort into the event, but it was basically for nothing. Only a few people chose to stay, and that really got to him. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that. I'll be sure to bring him some great liquor next time. I left in a hurry, and I couldn't make it back in time for the event. Gotta admit, I can understand their disappointment, though. You're our brigade's main selling point, after all. Now, if only the deputy could figure out a way to bring a few more smoking hot members into our ranks. <laughs> <laughs> Keep dreaming. Remember the last time I invited a couple gals into the brigade? You all just froze up with your mouths gaping like a bunch of scarecrows. The awkward silence and weird expressions left quite the impression on them. They were originally interested in joining us, but after that, they both told me they were too uncomfortable to stick around. Hey, 
didn't we agree to never bring that up again? Huh? Wait, are you serious? Why have I never heard about this? I don't think you were part of the brigade yet. Are you kidding me? I missed a once-in-a-lifetime moment like that and you weren't even gonna tell me? <laughs> all right, all right. We can tell you about it later. Now's not the time. Hey, don't you try to change the subject. You and Hisham get your butts over here and tell me everything right now. Uh, are they always like this? <laughs> More or less. There aren't many rules or graces when it comes to mercenaries. We're used to just speaking our minds. If someone starts getting under your skin, you just yell right back at them. And if that doesn't put an end to it, eh, then you just challenge them to a fight. But we also don't tend to take many things too seriously. Being direct and getting it all out of your system as soon as things come up is better than keeping everything bottled up, never talking about it. That's also why I never spare their feelings when I talk to them. If I want to laugh, I'll laugh. If I'm angry, then I'll unload on them. It's hard to stop once you get used to it. Though, I can never do that when I'm with the Homayanis. <clears throat> hey, knuckleheads! Can you at least tell me the rest of the intel before you go back to your bickering? <laughs> yeah, you hear her, Holoff? Told you we gotta focus on the investigation first. <laughs> I drew up a map. Right here is the spot. There you'll find the merchant caravan responsible for getting rid of the Al Akhmar's looted goods. All you gotta do is wait and ambush them in the evening. They'll have no idea what hit them. Perfect. Thanks for that. Be sure to pass my regards to everyone else in the brigade as well. Will do. You stay safe, dear. Now, like I said, the two ladies Dia brought with her were also like supermercs. I'm talking same level as Flame Mane here. Oh, you should have seen it. The aura of the two of them when they were standing together, it, it was incredible. I was just at a loss for words, that's all. Ah, oh, so pathetic. Hey! Shut up! This should be the place. Let's find a spot to hide and bide our time. It's gonna come down to a fight one way or another, so let's all be careful. No need to worry. He knows his way around a fight. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. What I meant is that we probably shouldn't go too hard on the enemy. After all, we still need to get information out of him. Here they come. You ready? Let's not give them a chance to react and end this quickly. I'll protect us. That's close enough. Let's get it on. Good. That saves me an introduction. 
All right, time for a little talk. Are you buddies with Dakana Lakmar now? Tell me, what are they after? <laughs> you know the code of being a mercenary just like everyone else. The first rule is to never divulge key information about our employer. What makes you think I'd talk? <laughs> that might have worked on an amateur, but I know you're just looking to protect your reputation. Think about it, though. What's your reputation worth if you won't have the other tools you need to succeed in this line of work? Tools like, I don't know, your limbs or eyes? You've got five seconds. You might want to think twice about how much your employer's information is worth to you. I'm not joking around. We can do this the easy way or the painful way. Two seconds! I'll save you the trouble. Huh? Are you crazy? <sighs> he tried to bite off his own tongue. Quick, search the area for any first aid supplies. I definitely didn't expect him to go that far. Thankfully, the wound wasn't too deep, and he just passed out from the pain. But why would he be so extreme? Uh, I just wanted to test his mettle. You can get a lot of mercenaries to talk just by threatening them. I didn't expect him to be willing to go through so much pain just to deny us some intel. Well, he's out cold for now. We could wait for him to wake up, but... Maybe it's not a good idea to interrogate him any further. What should we do? Yeah, don't worry about it. It'll be a waste of time to interrogate him again after that. He might just hurt himself again if we start asking. <sighs> there are lots of goods around here. Let's search the area. Maybe we'll be able to find something. <sighs> I'm really sorry. Let me take a look. If this really is a merchant caravan, they should have a record of their transactions. Hmm. Yep. I see an entry for Dakana Lakmar right here. Kusela, Idrisi, Bashar, and Tikriti. All familiar names. Dakana Lakmar has been trading for a hefty supply of food, weapons, and medicine. It seems that in the past, they used to receive some canned knowledge as well. This caravan is just one link in their logistics chain. Once in the rainforest, the caravan will exchange the looted goods for Mora, and the funds will then be passed to a specific person. That person will then pack the caravan full of necessary goods, which will then be brought right back to Dakana Lakmar. Wait, why is there no Mora value recorded for the final transaction? Hmm? No value? Yeah. Every transaction before the last one was marked with an exact amount of mora, but the final one, where they paid for everything to be brought back to the desert, was simply marked as delivered. Hmm, perhaps. But they couldn't have known how much they would make off selling the loot. Do they not care about profit margins at all? Anyway, the next part's the records of the goods themselves. There are a lot of entries. Everything was probably sourced from the rainforest. Huh? What's wrong? Shazaman Homayani? Homayani? You mean Dunyarzad's family? Uh, could, could it just be another family with the same last name? Hmm, I'd be surprised to find someone with the exact same first and last name. Shazaman Homayani is Dunyarzad's father, and the head of the Homayani family. Just 
What the heck is going on here? 